Hi everyone, my name is Jianan and I'm a PhD candidate with Dr. Emma Tao. Uh, today I will be talking about using radio mix and uh, unsupervised clustering to identify imaging subtypes of cancers. I will start with some background. Most of my work has been focused on colorectal cancer liver metastasis, which means colorectal cancer that has metastasized to the liver. Colorectal cancer is the second leading cause of cancer death in the developed world. Half of colorectal cancer patients develop liver meds, and uh, these liver meds account for two thirds of deaths. So far, uh, hepatic resection is the only curative treatment for those patients, but even with resected meds, the five year survival is only around 40%. It is important for us to develop better stratification methods as this may help us understand the disease and provide better treatment to patients. Um, medical imaging could be a good tool for stratifying liver meds patients because medical imaging is non-invasive and uh, the images are routinely collected in clinic for the diagnosis, staging, and operative planning of patients. I've been working on magnetic resonance imaging because MRI can provide a very good contrast of soft tissues and can highlight different structures with the help of different acquisition parameters and contrast agents. So uh, here is a very simple example of an MRI biomarker for liver meds. In this work, the radiologists use an imaging feature called target tumor enhancement to predict patient survival. It's basically the contrast to noise ratio of the tumor. Given this uh, liver MRI, um, you can get the TTE biomarker by calculating the mean intensity of the lesion minus the mean intensity of the liver divided by the standard deviation of background noise. And uh, from the Kaplan Mayo curve, uh, where the x-axis is survival time and the y-axis is survival rate, TTE could um, actually work very well in predicting patient outcome. So simply using intensity of an MRI can give us a pretty good biomarker. But since MRIs can provide a lot of details about the tissue, it would be great if we can use as much information from the images as possible. For example, the shape of uh, or the texture of the tumor. I will briefly introduce the patient cohort of my study. We used the retrospective cohort of 108 patients from Sunnybrook. The sequence we use is 10 minutes delayed gadabutrol enhanced T1 MRI from patients who are waiting for surgery. And the tumor's contours were segmented by a radiologist. As we have discussed, instead of using a single handcrafted feature, we want to incorporate all information from MRI. And one such tool is called radiomics. Radiomics is an emerging field in medical imaging analysis, and it's, I think it's slowly gaining attention in the bioinformatics field. Um, it extracts a large number of predefined features from images to describe the intensity histogram, shape, and texture of tumors. Once we extracted the features, we can use machine learning methods to perform feature selection and to perform, uh, to, sorry, to build models to predict patient outcome. In this work, we extracted a hundred features and we used lasso logistic regression for uh, feature selection and predictive modeling. And we derived a very simple three feature signature here using uh, lasso logistic regression. And by dichotomizing patients into two groups with predicted signature value higher or lower than the median respectively, um, our model had a very good predictive ability. There is a 40% absolute difference in three year survival between the two groups of patients. Um, and in a Cox regression model, uh, we compared our signature with other biomarkers. For example, phone score, a uh, clinical biomarker based on blood tests and other clinical information, and TTE, as we discussed earlier. Our model have much higher concordance index and hazard ratio in, in the Cox model. Again, the results looks great, but there is a big issue in the analysis and that is overfitting. During training, we introduced the bias by selecting the features associated with survival. And also we 
evaluated hundreds of features when we only have a hundred labels. Also, our uh, signature probably won't work in other data sets because the problem of uh, inter-institution variability from the scanner, contrast agent, and imaging protocol we use. In short, there is not enough data for training a non-overfitting supervised prediction model. And uh, another problem is the overlapping distribution of tumor appearance. In practice, patients with similar tumors and similar medical history can have uh, distinct outcomes. And uh, some groups had used consensus clustering to identify imaging subtypes of breast cancer. And the imaging subtypes they found is completely unrelated to the well-established molecular subtype of breast cancer. In other words, tumors from different molecular subtypes may have similar appearance in MRI. It is important for us to uh, develop better methods that can take these problems into account. In order to solve these problems, we propose an unsupervised clustering radiomics pipeline. The first steps are the same as conventional radiomics. We uh, extracted 100 features from MRIs, and then I used an autoencoder to learn feature representations and reduce dimensionality. So the autoencoder is basically a neural network-based feature selection technique. Um, we reduced the dimensionality of the feature space from 100 to 3. And then the selected fe uh, latent features are used as input for the unsupervised clustering method uh, to find the imaging subtypes. And uh, we chose Gaussian mixture model for clustering because it's able to estimate any observed distribution as a linear combination of overlapping Gaussian distributions. And the number of clusters is automatically determined using the minimal message length criteria. So uh, uh, these are the three clusters we identified. The figure on the left is a pair plot where the, both the x-axis and y-axis are the three-dimensional latent space. And the color indicates the clusters and each dot is a patient. We can see that these points form uh, three normal distributions, each representing an imaging subtype. There are 46, 41, and 21 patients in each subtype respectively. And there is significant difference in the three-year survival rate between subtype three and the other two subtypes. We compared our results with other unsupervised learning methods, including consensus clustering as a baseline and a state-of-the-art method called similar. You can see that our method is the only method that stays significant in the Cox regression model. Uh, we also compared our method with uh, existing biomarkers, uh, the phone score and TTE, and uh, we had better performance than phone score and uh, is comparable to TTE. But TTE is specifically designed for T1 MRI of liver mass and is a supervised model, while our model is unsupervised. So our model is less overfitted and can potentially be used to stratify other DTEs. Um, once we have the imaging subtypes, the question becomes, how can we use the imaging subtypes to help improve treatment? Here, I want to switch gear and talk about another project we did in breast cancer. We had a cohort of 33 invasive breast cancer patients, uh, and we obtained the imaging subtypes using the unsupervised clustering technique. And we also found the 10-year metastasis-free survival rate is different between two subtypes. Um, we, since we also have the transcriptomics data for this cohort, this gives us the opportunity to interpret this data uh, and look at the RNA differential expression of imaging subtypes and uh, also the pathway pathways. By looking at the dysregulate, dysregulated genes and pathways, uh, we will get a pool of um, genes that may be may have contributed to the difference in tumor appearance and patient outcome. They can potentially inform us about the underlying biology behind imaging subtypes. In summary, RudoMix is a method that extracts mathematical features from medical images to stratify patients. And our unsupervised clustering pipeline can be used to alleviate the issues of overfitting and overlapping distribution. In addition, interpreting the imaging findings with genomics or transcriptomics, we may be able to learn more about the underlying biological mechanisms and uh, how, uh, help us uh, develop better treatment for patients.